What's going on, my homies? Jolt here from the Token Minorities, and I am back with the Week 8 Team Builder of GBA Season 9, where your KC Jarrett Chiefs are preparing to take on Tom Z, the coach of the San Jose Sharpedos. Make sure to go check out my man Tom. Going to be linked down in the description below as usual. I really like the guy, a really good friend of mine in the GBA, and he's, he's a veteran. He's been involved in the GBA almost since the very beginning, I believe. Uh, so he's definitely he's been around for a, a few years, and uh, he knows he knows how this format operates. He's a solid player. Uh, sometimes I feel like he sells himself short, but uh, you know this season maybe not the best season overall that he's ever had. But he has so much potential, and you know he's just one of those guys that I can never never take too lightly here. As I personally think he's really capable of beating pretty much anybody, especially due to his preferred play style, which really seems to be more of like a momentum based play style. And if you just make a couple predictions uh, correct make a couple uh, correct predictions getting a little tongue twisted there uh with with a per, with a, a momentum heavy team that's going to put you in a really good position against any caliber of player so i really think tom is someone that i cannot mess with here in this week and as a result i have to build a team that's going to be able to in my opinion deal pretty well with the potential momentum approach that he could take with his team build now granted this specific team that he has doesn't have nearly as much um, as many momentum options as his team last season had. I think last season's team that he had was such a perfect fit for his play style. Uh, but even so, he does have some pretty good options on his team. He has the Top of Coco, Weavile, Latios, Gliscor, Drapion, Ho-Oh, Mesprit, Cloyster, Scizor, Conkelder, and the Arachnid with the Latios and Top of Coco being his Z captains on his draft. So he has a lot of big threats. He has a handful of momentum users. And uh, yeah, just some really powerful offense of options his team is very very offensive uh, which that's that's obviously going to be pretty threatening for my team to deal with as I don't really have the bulkiest Pokemon necessarily on uh, on my draft I have a lot of Pokemon with decent or pretty good natural bulk but I don't really have what you might call a quote-unquote like wall on my draft just due to my my uh, base stats I guess on on my team but uh, just something to go ahead and point out it's not really going to come to play here in this particular matchup uh, we actually made a transaction this past week was the final week of transactions for this season of the GBA we did decide to make one swap we dropped Miss Magius uh, unfortunately we tried to bring it last week against Deathly we did bring it unfortunately just weren't able to actually use it in that game based upon how the game played out but even so Miss Magius has left the team uh, and replacing it will be Meloetta now Meloetta is a Pokemon I've never used in draft format I have watched Randy HLD Productions coach of the uh, used to be Texas Rangers now the Houston Team Rockets. I watched him use it really effectively in the GBA D-League. Uh, I believe, I don't know if it was for two seasons or at least during the season that I was in the D-League. And I was really impressed with him when he used it. I was really impressed with its versatility. Uh, so it's, it's a Pokemon that I wanted to try out and I see some utility for it on my team. A lot more so than I saw utility for the Miss Magius. As Miss Magius best matchup for me probably the entire season was just going to be for that Deathly matchup. Uh, and it did have a very good matchup for that game don't don't get me wrong but uh, I didn't really see myself wanting to bring it at any other point throughout the rest of the season so I figured I'd pick up something that I might actually be willing to bring at some point during the season as uh, I just provide my team some key resistances as well as a good choice scarf user which I actually didn't really have I had some pretty good Choice Scarf users, don't get me wrong, but I don't really think they were optimal Choice Scarf users. Uh, more like the, the Pokemon that could run a Choice Scarf on my team are more like niche Choice Scarf users where I would bring a Choice Scarf to try to catch someone off guard as opposed to just bringing a Choice Scarf for the sake of having a Choice Scarf that can outspeed a bunch of threats. Like, the Meloetta is a lot better at uh, doing that in my opinion. So, uh, there's, there's a lot of utilities in Meloetta and hopefully we're able to explore that here throughout the rest of the season and hopefully in the playoffs as well assuming we're able to clinch that up here soon as uh, I believe how it stands right now if we win this game against Tom this week and the players at the bottom of our conference each lose their game which is possible I'm not sure if any of them might play each other in which case that might not be a possibility but uh, if if all of those players who are I believe currently at a two and five record lose this week then I believe we clinch playoffs already here in week eight by uh, get, picking up a win against Tom so there's a lot on the line here in this game uh, and it'd be really nice here to to clinch up playoffs as our next two opponents are both pretty 
hot. Uh, Cybertron and Danza. Danza red hot right now. Cybertron started off the season really well. Uh, cooled off a little bit here on the tail end, but he's still playing exceptionally well uh, this season, in my opinion, especially compared to where he was at last season. So uh, the next two games are not easy, so if we can clinch this week, that would be ideal for sure. Uh, but anyway, with all that said, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the team. I've already talked, or I guess very briefly talked through what, uh, what his draft is. It is very offensive. And uh, he has a lot of priority on his team, too. He has, what, the Scizor and Calder Cloister with Ice Shard. He has the Ice Shard Weavile. All of those really strong priority options on his team. He also has the Sticky Web potential with the Araquin. So he has a lot of really good means of speed control. In addition to, I'm thinking if he has any Trick Room users, I think the Mesprit's a good, decent Trick Room user if you wanted to take that route as well. I think Latios might get Trick Room, too. Uh, so he has that option. He also has some good agility users, too. So he has a lot of good speed control on his team, uh, but most notably are those priority options because he has so much strong priority on his team. I have to really keep that in mind when I'm trying to decide what my win condition is in this game. And when I'm kind of looking at the, the draft overview, I don't think my win condition is very clear in all honesty. I don't think I have a single Pokemon that's able to just run through his entire team and not have to fear being easily revenge killed by a, one of his offensive members. So with that in mind, I have to build a team that's able to take hits relatively well in addition to picking up KOs, hopefully to the point where I'm able to uh, clean up the game with a Pokemon that can survive uh, one of his stronger priority options or any of his stronger priority options in the end game. So that's pretty much what I have to set up with my team build. Now with that said, let's go ahead and look on over uh, at the, the team that I'm going to bring for this week against Tom as we're going to kick this off with the Mega Aerodactyl. Now this is one of my means of trying to clean up the remainder of his team in the end game. Packing Stone Edge, Ice Fang, and Earthquake hits his entire team neutral which is really nice. He doesn't like switching into Stone Edge at all. Uh, one of his better switch-ins to the Stone Edge is the Gliscor, which uh, does not appreciate the Ice Fang either. And then his other good switch into, I guess he used Kinkelder that can technically switch into this, but if he switches in Kinkelder hard into a Mega Aerodactyl, he is a man. Uh, just because I could easily bring the, the Aerial Ace to hit that super hard if that's uh, something that I opted to bring here in this matchup. So I don't think that's a play he'll make until I reveal my entire moveset. Uh, but even so, Earthquake is nice as well because it will be able to guaranteed outspeed the top of Coco if he is not Choice Scarfed. Uh, so this gives me a good offensive way to check that as well. The Scizor is the other Pokemon that can easily switch into this. And what's nice about this set with this much defensive investment and attack investment is if he's just a max HP Scizor, if I have Stealth Rock on on the field I should be able to 2 KO that with the Stone Edge as well. So this is just really tough for him to switch, switch into. It's one of my better late game options, but it's also one of my best, probably my best, one of my best switch-ins into the Ho-Oh as well. That is his tier 1 Uber. That's something I have to keep an eye on throughout this entire game just because it is so strong, it's so threatening, and there's a variety of sets he could really bring against me for that Pokemon. He can bring Bandit if he wants to just get a kill. He can bring Scarf if he wants to be a big threat, but I think what's more likely is that he's going to be a Roost variant, uh, probably even with Leftovers and Brave Bird, Sacred Fire, maybe Iron Head for the uh, Mega Aerodactyl. I just see that being more likely because that would allow him to have a more secure, dedicated response to the potential offense of Magirna, as otherwise he really doesn't have, in my opinion, the best options to uh, check a Magirna that could run a variety of coverage moves. It was able to take anything from Magirna as long as I don't have a bunch of boosts. So I do kind of expect to be a, him to have a little bit more of a bulkier uh, Roost Ho-Oh sets, and in that case, this thing is still pretty good at dealing with that, along with a lot of other members of my team. If he's not Choice Scarfed, a lot of my team can actually outspeed the Ho-Oh and can do a good chunk of damage to it as well, so um, that's something I'll be keeping in mind throughout the game, but this is one of my better switch-ins to that, but most importantly, again, its role is meant to be kind of a late-game cleaner. If he doesn't bring the Scizor, this could actually come in in the mid-game and start breaking through his team a lot faster, but I do anticipate the Scizor to come, and uh, we'll just kind of see how the game plays out from there, but that's the Mega Aerodactyl. It's fat enough to take hits from the Ho-Oh as needed and uh, fast enough to outspeed the top of Coco as well. So that's Mega Aero. Then we have the Scolipede. This is another option to kind of assist the Mega Aerodactyl in the late game in addition to being an additional check to the Tapu Coco uh, and the 
Weavile's, a lot of his faster threats, as I do have to protect on this set to make sure I can outspeed those Pokemon. Uh, I opted for the Adamant Nature instead of the Jolly Nature, as even though this doesn't outspeed Latios at face value, the Protect will allow me to outspeed Latios. I don't think he's going to be Choice Scarf, because that would potentially give him a gear and a free setup. Uh, so I think he's going to be more of a Z-Mover Life Orb Latios, and even so... Regardless of which one of those he brings, I guess it could be Tanga Berry as well, although I think that's a little bit unlikely uh, just due to the drop off in power. But uh, regardless, uh, Protect will allow me to outspeed the Latios as well. So this is again a really good speed win condition in the late game that has enough bulk to take one of those priority hits from his strong priority users. So this can definitely be used as a solid offensive win con late in the game. But the one thing that needs to be pointed out now between the Scolipede and the Mega Aerodactyl is neither of them really deal with the Scizor particularly well. They both can hit it decently hard. Life Orb Aqua Tail does a good chunk of damage to the Scizor and uh, Stone, Edge, Stone Edge from Mega Aerodactyl does a decent chunk as well, but neither of those are going to be able to knock out the Scizor in one hit. So I need to have other Mons on my team that can either lure in the Scizor or can easily check it or switch into it in, uh, in an extreme situation. So the next three Pokemon you're going to see, really the next four Pokemon that you're going to see, are all going to be able to uh, accomplish that task pretty well. So next up is going to be the Mew. This Mew is a bit, it's definitely more of a utility Mew uh, this week for sure. Toxic Ice Beam, Defog, and Flamethrower. I'm, I really didn't want to bring Defog. I'm going to be honest, I did not want to bring Defog on Mew this week, but he has the Araquanid, which is likely enough to come to help out against the Manaphy that I think he could easily bring the Sticky Web this week. So this is going to help protect me against the Sticky Web. Uh, not that Sticky Web necessarily harms my offensive win cons in this game, uh, in the Aerodactyl and the Scolipede, but it does kind of harm stuff like my Groudon and Manaphy, and even this Mew to an extent, as I like being able to outspeed a lot of his team with my nice base 100 speed tier. So, uh, yeah, so that's that's the importance of Defog, I guess, in this matchup, mostly for the Sticky Web. Toxic is just nice for the Ho-Oh especially. It helps prevent the Ho-Oh from recovering too much health uh, each time it comes in, as Ho-Oh is a pretty light switch into Mew, I feel. Um, I, I don't really see him as having very many safe switch-ins to Mew necessarily. I guess he could switch in something like Drapion if he brings it. I don't think that's particularly likely, likely. and if he does bring the Drapion, I have stuff like the uh, Mega Aerodactyl, the Manaphy, the Magearna, the Groudon. All these Pokemon can switch into the, the Drapion pretty well, honestly, so I'm not too concerned about that. It could be a Pursuit user, I guess, uh, and if he Pursuit traps my Mew, that's honestly fine. This thing's main role is to be a Defogger, hopefully to get a Toxic off on the Ho-Oh if I can, and uh, to potentially check the Scizor with the Flamethrower and the Latios and the Gliscor with the Ice Beam as well. So pretty straightforward set overall on the Mew, I suppose, uh, but definitely serves an important role here in this game. Now, next up is the Magear, and I played with a variety of sets on this Magearna for this week, but this one I think was by far the best, just because I felt like I needed a lot of coverage uh, against his team to allow Magearna to be the threat that it really should be in this matchup. He is just, he's very weak to Magearna as a setup variety, but he has a pretty annoying combination of type resistances uh, to where it was not really the best, I guess, to run like a setup move, three attacks type of Magearna. So uh, I opted for a four attacks variant with Volt Switch, HP Fire, Fleur Cannon and the Ice Beam, basically a max defense variant as well. I ran a little bit of speed to try to outspeed the Scizor. I don't think Scizor runs much speed in this matchup unless it's going to be Choice Scarf to outspeed my Mew uh, for a for a U-turn. But uh, if it's not Choice Scarf, then I think this Magearna should be able to outspeed him, which gives me a better chance at firing off the Hidden Power Fire, and that should be able to just knock it straight out unless it's an Akaberry variant. So uh, this could potentially serve as a lure for the Scizor. Volt Switch is nice on the incoming Ho-Oh that, again, I think is a really likely switch into this, just like it is for the Mew, and in both cases, if I'm able to catch the Ho-Oh with a Toxic and have rocks in the field and get Volt Switch damage off on it repeatedly, that's that's huge for my team, honestly. It's not going to be able to survive very long uh, if if I have all of that in play against the Ho-Oh. So, um, yep, then Floor Cannon, just really nice and spammable against his team. Ice Beam is specifically for the Gliscor, just to make sure that's not going to be an easy switch into my like, gear in it either. Uh, fortunately, with all this extra defense investment, I can probably just leave this in on Gliscor if I want to just get rid of it at some point during the game as well. So that's something I can certainly keep in mind uh, too. And what's kind of funny about this set is that this actually takes a hit 
from Ho-Oh too. If I really wanted to take a Sacred Fire from Ho-Oh, if it's not Choice Bandit, I'm pretty sure I'd take the hit as long as it's not in the sun. So, <laughs> Fat Manaphy is just, or Fat Manaphy, Fat Magirna is just ridiculous, guys. But uh, next up is the Groudon. This is an Iopapa Berry Stealth Rocker. Uh, so this is my dedicated lead in this matchup in all likelihood, uh, where I'm trying to go, go ahead and get rocks up as early in the game as possible. He might be able to defog them away, but it's going to come at an opportunity cost for him as I, as I do have solid coverage for all of his potential defoggers. Uh, no human's going to try to defog with a sizzle in the face of a Groudon. That'd be very aggressive, very risky. Uh, so I don't think that's something he's going to do, and even if he does, he's not going to appreciate Precipice Blades at all. Uh, that's that's for sure. HP Ice does a good chunk of damage to the Glide Score. It should be a 2-hit KO. I expect him to be more physically defensive to help him deal with the Groudon this week, and uh, Stone Edge specifically for the, I guess, Latio and more importantly for the Ho-Oh uh, as well. So pretty interesting set. I'm running the quirky nature <laughs> this week just because I didn't really want to drop any of my stats uh, in, in this matchup. And I still am able to outspeed Jolly Scizor, uh, which could easily come, I suppose, to maybe outspeed a max speed Incineroar if he was concerned about that. So I wanted to make sure I could outspeed that. But uh, yeah, I have Popberry with the even HP stat specifically for the Z Nature's Madness Top of Coco, which is a possibility. I don't think it's going to come. I think it's much more likely that he is Z Latios plus Life Orb Coco as Life Orb Modest Grass, not which he is able to run Modest against my team. Uh, should be able to do enough in theory to the to the Groudon to where he wouldn't really want a Z move, but I'm not going to leave myself open to that option either as I really think that uh, Groudon is my best switch in to the Coco that I'm bringing. I could bring the Gudra for that role as well, but I don't think it really benefited me quite as much as something like this Groudon would. So, um, yep, so that is the Groudon, and then finally we have the uh, Manaphy. This set is pretty straightforward as well. A lot of defense investment to allow me to take hits from the Ho-Oh again, specifically as well as to chew the uh, possible priority hits that he could go for, as well as just other physical attacking moves. His, his team is very heavily uh, physically oriented for sure. Weavile too, I can take hits from that better. So uh, combination Surf Dazzling Gleam just hits his entire team neutrally. Tail Glow because I can set up on a lot of stuff. And the uh, Heal Bell because the Ho-Oh's Sacred Fire Burns are kind of annoying, especially for my uh, Mega Aerodactyl, which obviously I'm trying to potentially set up a, a late game win condition for it. So Heal Bell will help out against that, and the Glide Score could easily spam tox Toxics against my team too, uh, so I feel like that's nice. It also prevents the Araquanid from trying to Toxic Stall Trap my uh, my Manaphy as well. So that is the team for this week. You'll notice with the nicknames, we are rocking these superhero nicknames for the first time this season, as opposed to the super villains. So uh, shout out to, I believe it was Chow who was asking for that in the uh, in the comments so I got you man I told you I'd do it here we go and <laughs> we'll just have to see how it all turns out here for this game but make sure to let me know what you think about the team in the comments below I think it's pretty solid uh, not really dedicated win conditions in this game necessarily but I think the team as a whole is pretty cohesive it should be able to to withstand his offense and really take advantage of his lack of a stout defensive core uh, against my draft so that's that's the goal here with this team and hopefully it's able to work out as planned. But, uh, yep, I think we are about done here. going to be playing Tom in hopefully around a half hour to an hour. We will see. Uh, sorry, this is all coming out pretty late for you guys this week. But uh, we're, we're doing what we can. So, anyway, hope you guys are looking forward to the match. Make sure to check out Danza and Goldoa's battles if you haven't already for this, uh, for this week of the GBA. And I will see you all uh, whenever the battle comes up, which hopefully is within the next day or less or something like that. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Peace.